Did you ever wonder why natural laws are so precise and so orderly? Agnostic astronomer Paul Davies asked that question in the New York Times in 2006. And you know what his atheistic colleagues did? They filled his email box with vitriol. They said, Paul, you ought not even be asking that question. It's not a scientific question. He said, but what's the reason for it? Why are these laws so orderly and so consistent? You know what the favorite response of the atheist was? They're just there. Don't even ask the question. Well, why are they just there? Why is the universe so orderly and goal-directed? Because there's a mind behind it that is directing it. In fact, Aristotle called this final causality, that all of nature is goal-directed. And Aristotle didn't believe in a beginning to the universe. He thought the universe was eternal. What's the point? The point here is, is that the universe could even be eternal and you'd still need an external intellect, a god, to keep it going. Now think about this. Think about just nature that isn't conscious, like an acorn. Why does an acorn always become an oak tree? Why doesn't it become an elm tree or a pear tree or a seahorse? Why? Because it's goal-directed to become an oak tree. What's goal-directing it? There must be an external intellect out there that's directing an unconscious thing toward an end. In fact, developmental biologists have been experimenting with fruit fly embryos. They try and divert fruit fly embryos to get them to become something else very early, very early on in the embryonic process. And you know what the fruit fly embryos always do? They always make heroic efforts to get back on course after the biologists have diverted them. And what happens is, is the developmental biologists get one of three conclusions or three results from these experiments. They get a normal fruit fly, they get a mutant fruit fly, or they get a dead fruit fly. They don't even get a horse fly, much less a horse. Why? Because embryos from fruit flies are goal-directed to become fruit flies. Even with all our intelligence, we can't direct them away from becoming fruit flies. So why should we expect non-intelligence, i.e. macroevolutionary processes, to do so? In fact, the entire world is goal-directed, which requires an external intellect, an external intellect directing things toward their ends. In fact, you're thinking right now, think about this. How could you think? Well, the neurons in your brain need to, follow, need, need to fire properly. Well, wh in order for the neurons to fire properly, the atoms must do what they do. And in order for the atoms to do what they do, well, the four fundamental forces of nature must do what they do. Well, why are the four fundamental forces of nature doing what they do? We're getting back to the question Paul Davies asked. As Aristotle would say, as Aquinas would say, and as I think good reason would say, there's a mind directing them. So even if natural laws could explain everything inside the universe, you'd still need a creator and a sustainer of those natural laws. Now, if you want more on this, get the book, Stealing from God, Why Atheists Need God to Make Their Case.